and Apache Pop. And those two tools are necessary to convert all the XML files and your content into the PDF report. The third thing you need is, of course, content. Um, as a technical writer, for instance, if you're writing a quote, you'll need to add some details of uh, what your customer wants to be tested, when, etc., etc. And of course, for pen tests, you need to scan outputs, you need to find things, round findings, all the content that make up a beautiful pen test report. By the way, also a really quick uh, quick note, this is what you need to set up on the back end. So basically, this is what you set up on the server side. Uh, the nice thing about this is then, at that point, there's hooks into the chat room, so any new people that you introduce to your pen testing team, whether they're pen testers or technical writers, at that point actually have to set up absolutely nothing. Really, all they have to do is issue commands in a chat room, as we are about to demonstrate, which then will launch uh, the entire system. But essentially, these, these are the steps now that the sysadmin has to go through in setting up the whole system. So, um, This is a small setup of a, or a demo diagram of a, the demo setup. system in which we also use it and everything is open source okay, okay. so and uh, at some point uh, we're all uh, at the towards the end of the talk I'll be talking about some other automations and hooks and things we're gonna also be adding and we sort of again see this as an e ecosystem so yeah I think right now you could say that uh, the pentex repository if you look it up on the github it not only contains the uh, the XML files etc etc to build the PDF files but it also for instance contains uh, content snippets that you can use and reuse for your uh, pen test reports, but also for quotes. It also contains the chat up script that we're using and demoing right now. So yeah. it's 
an umbrella term, so to speak. So we are giving away all of our boilerplate. I mean, all of it is Creative Commons. We are giving away our entire library of, uh, you know, findings of sort of genericized findings, you know, that our pen tester library that we use internally. So yeah, and, and all of that is sort of under the umbrella of what we're calling pen tests. So. We offer a number of services, um, the one most being requested being pen testing, but we also do stress testing, load testing, um, source code analysis, et cetera, et cetera. What I'm going to show you right now is how to build a quote for a pen test, and that's the default uh, quote that we're going to use. So I'm going to ask Rothbard once again politely to set us up a framework containing all kinds of boilerplate snippets ready to be used in a quote for a pen test. Rothbard, quick scope. This is the name of the repository that we have just created our demo. And now at the background, it's setting up an XML file, the source file that's going to be used to create the PDF file from, and it will contain all kinds of links to the snippets in the pen text framework. Yeah. And the nice thing also is that uh, it goes from basically a quick scope uh, XML file, which is a basically an A4's worth of XML in which you can just sort of fill in some basic things. It generates basically a larger, uh, well again, it, we still need to change the name, but it, right now it's called oferta.xml, in which uh, if you then want to do, for example, a non-standard quotation, then you can basically uh, edit it as, uh, as you would see fit. And then at that point, uh, you can use that to generate a PDF as we're about to show. So, In the background, this is the repository that we just uh, created using uh, ChatUp, Rothbard to be exact. Uh, these are all uh, directories containing various bits of the Pentex framework. Uh, I'm not going to show you all of them. The basic file that a technical writer is going to use can be found in the source directory. And as we're now creating a quote, it's going to be called Oferta.xml. And as Melanie told, uh, we're originally a Dutch company. Oferta is a Dutch word meaning quote. So using the GitLab web interface, I could do this on my own workstation, clone the repository and open a fancy editor like uh, VI or Emacs and do the same. I'm now using the uh, direct web interface to immediately edit the file in the Git repository itself. Edit the file. Is this legible by anyone? Can everyone read this? The customer requested a pen test for us, so I'm going to add the targets that we're going to pen test, uh, say ballast point slash targets and stone slash targets. Um, I'm going to add the duration of the pen test. Ballast points and stone are rather large companies, so I'm going to set the duration for 10 days of the pen test. And also important, how much we're going to charge uh, the customer. So by merely editing this source file in the Pentex repository, we're now able, as we did the first step content, to build a PDF quote. It's also worth mentioning that also uh, we're taking, uh, including a bunch of different snippets uh, from different locations, all of which uh, are modifiable uh, also to meet your own needs. There's also a sort of a customer database uh, also, which is a collection of XML files. And uh, we have a fictional company called uh, Sitting Duck. <laughs> Uh, that uh, also we're uh, uh, t including that information uh, from an XML snippet, uh, and then you will see when we render the PDF that, uh, that well, that's where we get that, that information from. So once again, this is the source file, including all kinds of links to snippets, and we're going now to ask Rosbot politely to build us a PDF file. Rosbot build quote with the name of the repository, our demo, and right now in the background, it's invoking the Pentex toolchain, uh, Saxon and Apache, which is going to convert the XML files and the style sheets, et cetera, et cetera, into a PDF file. Yeah. And please note again that absolutely everything that we've done to make this happen was executed from the chat, which also means that absolutely nobody has to install anything locally. I'm now opening the PDF file that was just generated. And as you can see, this is the PDF file freshly minted uh, with the default data, I scroll down a little bit, and as you can see here, 
here are the two targets that I just edited in the source file, Bellas Point and Stone. Right here at the bottom you can see the duration of the pen test that I edited, 10 days, and rather important, somewhere in the quote, here you are, is the amount of 100 euros that we're going to charge the customer. Yeah. Excuse me? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. We're so in not for profit. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, but, but, but keep in mind that, I mean, yes, right now this is using our boilerplate, but keep in mind that our boilerplate can be very easily replaced with yours. Uh, our company logo can be very easily replaced with yours. It originally took us a week or, week or two to put quotations together. Now it takes us uh, about a half hour once we actually know, <laughs> and we've actually done the scoping uh, with the customer themselves. So. The second demo, let's go to the, uh, the GIST. Uh, creating pen test reports in the PDF. Similar as to the quote, you have a basic source file. I just opened offerta.xml. For a pen test, it's going to be named uh, report.xml, and it will contain, uh, again, all links to all kinds of snippets that are in the pen text repository. What does the pen test report need as well? It will uh, need scan output, findings, and non-findings. So what we're basically doing right now is asking all the pen testers that are going to work on a pen test to write up their findings using XML. The XML file, for instance, for a finding, as you can see right here, it contains of the, the basic information you would expect in a pen test report. Title, description, technical description, mitigations, et cetera, et cetera. Well, actually, the uh, sort of the structural foundation of it is XML, but we've actually also come up with another system that, again, we are about to uh, to demo. Uh, that actually, you know, for the pen testers that actually also don't even want to bother with XML, <laughs> we've also come up with ways uh, in which they can also use GitLab issues to be able to automatically generate the XML. So, say our customer uh, accepts their quote. Next, we're going to set up our pen test. We're going to do that similar as asking Rossbot to start the quote process, but now it's starting up a pen test. Rossbot start pen test with the name of the project, demo. In the background, it's now doing almost the same as with the quote, um, but with a little twist. What it does right now, it um, takes some files of the quote repository, for instance, information about the client, but also information about the targets, et cetera, et cetera and it's injecting that into the freshly minted pen test repository. Why is that? We want to reuse information. A customer accepted a certain quote, so we want to make sure that that information is being used in the pen test itself, and it's being included in the report. Here you are. So you can see that a, a new uh, Rocket Chat channel was automatically created for the pen test now, and generally when we invite customers to join us, that will be the channel that we use. Also, just so they don't uh, see all the previous discussion about pricing and stuff in the uh, quotation. So, although we're inexpensive, <laughs> not really. <laughs> I'm going back to the GitLab web interface, and as you can see, it generated a new repository for our pen test. And here we're going to use the issue tracker. This is a Beshu issue tracker, bug tracker, so to speak, and that's where uh, most pen testers will actually add the findings. The pen test report itself, um, as I said, contains lots of uh, XML files. We want to make it as easy as possible for pen testers and technical writers to keep on doing the thing that they're best at. So to stay out of the way, to keep them in their flow. Say I'm pen testing on this uh, pen test, I'm working on balance point, um, and I'm finding a new vulnerability. I could either write up now uh, XML file containing the vulnerability, or I could use the issue tracker. Say I discovered that a session cookie misses a secure flag. Session cookie misses secure flag. And here, usually I would do the write up. Some of the pen testers really like to do the write up as soon as possible. So as soon as they find the vulnerability, do the complete write up. Um, other pen testers uh, only dump there the bare minimum, um, how they can reproduce the problem and issues. We um, don't force 
one way of working for pen testers. We let to each their own. We want to make sure that all pen testers keep in their flow. What we ask of all pen testers is that they finish their write up as soon as the pen test is finished. So now I'm going to be the lazy pen tester and I'm only going to add the command how I found this vulnerability. Say curl with some command line flags, HTTPS balance point to target. So once again, this is my output, how I found this vulnerability, the bare minimum, uh, that cookie. And here I'm going to assign a label. When I asked Rasbot to set up this pen test channel, it not only uh, created the repository for us, but it also added a number of default labels. Two of these are findings and non-findings. Now by merely attaching the label finding to my issue, I let Rasbot know that this is an actual issue and it can convert this automatically for me into XML format. It's also worth mentioning also that then the non-findings, for those of you who don't use them, are basically the things that we tried that did not work. And it's also a uh, default for us that we also report those things uh, to the customer. I'm going to submit the issue. So now all pen testers, uh, we work with the team in different time zones, so for us it's really important to have smooth handovers. All pen testers now can see um, that one pen tester found this issue. Yeah, and, and another thing also is uh, we also give access to the GitLab repository to the customers as well, <laughs> uh, just for their pen tests, of course, uh, which also means that they're actually able to uh, sort of step by step sort of see exactly what we're doing at any given point in the pen test. It's also, also worth, worth announcing that, uh, I don't think we have it turned on here, but in our real production environment, we also have Git hooks uh, also set up in the channel so that every time we add an issue or any time we make a check-in into GitLab, that is also announced in the channel, uh, along with a cl clickable link that people can follow that then take you to the GitLab repository to read what it is that we just put in there. So, say the pen test is finished. Uh, now, theoretically, I should write up the, all my findings, non-findings in XML format, or I could ask Rossbot politely, Rossbot, convert with the name of the repo, pen demo, and now in the background, once again, it's cloning our pen test repository. Uh, it's checking all the issues and each issue either labeled with finding or non-finding will be automatically converted to XML file and committed to the repository. So at this point in time, the repository contains all necessary to build a pen test report. Are we finished? Not yet. Um, as we work with lots of uh, technical writers and uh, Pen testers, we want to make sure that we have a certain standard. Say, for instance, we want all titles uh, using title case. We want all descriptions ending with a dot. We want that pen testers use um, the same names for the same vulnerabilities. Spell checking. <laughs> That's a fancy word for it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and most importantly, we also want to make sure that the XML file, report.xml, contains all the links to the various XML files that were added to the repository. So now we're going to validate the report, whether it's ready to be built. Rasbot validate with the name of the repository, pen demo. And as you can see, um, lots of stuff. Um, I didn't really uh, put in the issue as I should. I'm going to uh, ask Rasbot once again to validate it, but to automatically fix all the issues that it found. Rasbot validate, pen demo, auto fix. And if everything went well, it now fixed all of my, I don't think spelling errors, but maybe uh, title cases, et cetera, et cetera. And now we're ready to build the final PDF report, the pen test report. Rasbot build, report, pen demo. And in the background, again, it's invoking Saxon and Apache FOB to convert all of our XML files with the style sheets, with the boilerplate text stuff, et cetera, et cetera, into a PDF file. Yeah, now you can see basically that it spit out uh, a clickable link into the chat. So both us and also the customers, all they have to do if they want to see their uh, pen test report in progress is just click on that PDF link and it opens. And here you are, the pen test report. 
As you can see, it includes the target that I only added during the quote process. It lifted those details from the quote repository and added them to the pen test repository. It, it uh, contains all basic meta information, but more important is, as you can see in the table of contents, here it is, our finding, session cookie missing secure flag with a clickable link. And this is the text that I just added into the issue tracker. Yeah. So by merely using the pen text framework, we are able to quickly, reproducibly, automatically uh, create such pen test reports, which is pretty impressive, I may say so. <laughs> are we finished? Not yet. Um, even though we're not for profit, uh, we still send out invoices. That's <laughs> one thing you can ask Rosbot as well to create us a fresh invoice. Rosbot invoice with the name of the repository of demo with the invoice number. And here you are, the final build. It generated an invoice for us based on the information that was added into the quote repository. So this really follows our entire workflow, you know, from the uh, pen test scoping and quotation process through to the pen test report, all the way through to the final invoice. So, uh, but okay, so this all is really, really cool. The question then is what other kinds of things can we integrate into this workflow? So uh, again, coming back to the central core idea of chat ops is just that we can launch stuff from the chat. You know, at a certain point we started asking ourselves questions of like, well, you know, what kinds of other things can we launch from the chat? And we started coming up with an interesting list. Uh, some of these things here are things we've already implemented. A few of these things here are also uh, sort of some things that we uh, are still thinking about. Nonetheless, scanning and exploitation. We've already done an implementation of uh, basically Nmap uh, so that uh, we can launch Nmap from the scan. And of course, think about it. Basically, you can launch this stuff and automatically have it get uh, checked into uh, to GitLab in the right place, you know, so stuff can basically get plucked out and put into the report in the right place. Uh, of course, we're gonna continue automating this uh, also with a lot of other different kinds of tools. We envision that ultimately we should be able to uh, use a chat ops style of workflow also for web scanners like W3AF, uh, tools like SQL map, uh, brute forcing with uh, tools like Hydra. Why not? I mean, all of this stuff could very well be and again, it, it, it makes it easy because it also provides a standard environment. <laughs> you know, and, and, and also it's worth noting, it also provides a standard IP address <laughs> also uh, from which we're launching all of this stuff, which of course also makes whitelisting with the customers uh, considerably easier. Um, what other things though can we also launch from the chat? You know, how about passive reconnaissance? You know, why can't we do things like who is, or Google queries. We also had uh, written uh, a passive scanning tool. Uh, this is also, by the way, open sourced and in GitHub. And uh, this essentially just takes a Shodan and, uh, well, scans.io, now census, uh, and basically uses that to uh, basically query, you know, what can we find from those uh, sources uh, passively uh, for our particular targets. Uh, crypto, you know, why can't we do hash cracking from the chat? You know, we don't have it set up yet, but I mean, at, at some point, if we were to get a cracking cluster or, or set up rainbow tables, I mean, what would be more perfect than that? <laughs> you know, and that anybody, everybody could access it via that interface. Uh, other things that we've already implemented, things like uh, email and SMS integration. Uh, we've also built a uh, spear phishing uh, suite that is not yet open sourced, but I'm actually gonna be giving a presentation uh, at Holland Strikes Back in October. Uh, at which uh, we are going to be launching uh, that. Uh, searching for CVEs, you know? I mean, basically the, uh, I think the CSERT team in uh, Luxembourg had uh, you know, made basically a really nice uh, REST API for uh, being able to search the CVE database. And we can also, again, these are the hooks that we can basically hook into and be able to do all of this stuff uh, from our chat. So again, we, we think that this is pretty exciting and so far, you know, this has actually worked really, really well for us uh, in practice. Another nice thing is that uh, because we're basing our entire pen testing workflow from the chat room, it actually enables us to innovate new forms of pen testing. 
So what we did is we came up with a new, well basically something called a red-blue pen test. So what we did is we took, uh, let's say uh, we need to pen test a, a product. So what we do is we actually take the development team. So let's say we have uh, software developers, DevOps people, sysadmins, and we basically divide them in half. One half is a red team, one half is a blue team. And then each of the two teams essentially is led by one of our professional pen testers. Now what they do is we actually get the red team and the blue team to pen test their own product. Yeah, it's cool. A and all of it then, uh, ho again, hooks back into our chat ops uh, suite and our, you know, and pen text with all the XML automation and things like that. Granted, it's newbies, so we have to clean up their uh, <laughs> reports <laughs> a little bit. But, uh, but nonetheless, uh, we did that already, uh, you know, with some customers. And I can tell you that during uh, one of the wrap up sessions that we had with one of our customers, like literally, like to quote one of the uh, developers, he basically said, I am never going to look at coding the same way again. And the really nice thing then about being able to include the customers in that way and to have them be that integrally involved with their own pen test is it really conveys the mindset. <laughs> you know, I mean, we can also add, add in little bits of training, like teaching them how to do source code audits, I mean, for example. Um, and we also gamify it. You know, <laughs> which, which even further takes them out of their role as software developer and puts them into the role of hacker. So we actually also, you know, used Hubot and some, some coffee script uh, to create some gamification scripts. So basically if the red team scored, you know, the, the, the scoreboard would be incremented for one team and then you would get some funny, like you can see for example here, uh, good job blue, and you can see that Rossbot says incremented blue, 24 points, and then it prints out like some, you know, funny, picture, you know, motivational picture, you know, to kind of make it fun. So we're turning their pen test into a game, you know, and yes, we did wind up taking up 12 of their developers' time for a week, but again, consider this to be a training exercise for them, right? <laughs> so it's, it's time well invested. But at the same time, you know, in, in the course of a one-week pen test, we basically wound up finding, uh, I think, 40 findings just in one week and a complete attack chain throughout their entire system. And what's really great about that is the developers found it themselves. You know, so they don't feel threatened, because oftentimes as pen testers, you know, you get the feeling that you're going in there and saying, hey, you're doing it wrong. And then they're like, no, we're not. <laughs> you know, or they'll just say, yeah, but you know, only super geniuses, you know, can, can find, you know, these kinds of problems. But the thing is, when they find it themselves, they can't say that anymore, because now they're the super geniuses. <laughs> You know, and plus it, it takes away the ego factor because they found it themselves, so they're like, oh cool, we hacked our own product. So, in a lot of different ways, this is actually a whole lot of win. And it, this would not even be possible if we didn't have this, uh, this chat ops workflow. Uh, we've got five more minutes, so just let me finish first. Uh, you know, and again, I mean, we're super happy and super excited that we can give all of all of this back to the community. I mean, I really think that we are pushing, you know, the envelope and, and the boundaries in the way that we're doing pen testing. We think it's a really awesome way of working, and we sort of hope that now that all of this stuff is open sourced and an OWASP project, we hope that you all will be inclined to perhaps try it out for your own organizations. And w once okay. again, to uh, to get started with the Pentex framework, the only thing you need to is to clone the repository. Uh, it's a GitHub repository. The link is up on the the website. You need to install the tool chain, uh, or you can also use a Vagrant box. We put up a Vagrant box so you can easily uh, test drive the stuff. We also put up an Ansible playbook for those familiar with Ansible. Basically, the only things you need are Saxon and Apache Fop, and of course, content. That's all you need to build those beautifully PDF reports. Great, so with that, uh, we would like to thank you for your attention, and we're happy to take any questions. Yes. Um, if people have questions, could they come up here to use the microphone, please? So uh, for the like developer workshop that you do, do you kind of sell that as a pen test or a like training workshop? Both. <laughs> I mean, basically we ex explain the concept of a uh, red-blue pen test to them, and they actually, in a way, almost see it more as a training exercise. 
So, but it's a training exercise in which they happen to get a like a very thorough pen test out of it afterwards. So, <laughs> that too, yeah. <laughs> so, and budgets tend to be higher for training exercises than for uh, pen tests as well. So, any more questions? You had a question, didn't you? Oh, ah. A lot of pen testers I know, like during a test, will use chat as a sort of. Um, blow off area to talk a lot of smack about the client that they're working on. Does that sort of constrain you having the client as no. part of the same chat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously we, we need to be like kind of nice about what we say uh, while we're in the channel with the customer. <laughs> yeah, that, exactly, that's why we have two channels. No, but in seriousness, we also have a number of uh, sort of company channels that we have as well. I mean, we have everything from like Ross pen testers, just general Ross, which is like for company announcements. We've got Ross off topic, which is like our water cooler. <laughs> you know, so we've actually got uh, also Ross tech writer. So we've got a number of different uh, internal channels that we can use for all kinds of chit chat if we, for some reason, don't feel like including <laughs> the customer. By the way, one, one more thing I also should mention because I think it's important is the discussion of security. Of course, with this entire chat ops environment, I'm surprised I didn't get a question about it yet. Um, so we actually also, on these various tools, have basically built access control. So first of all, uh, you know, uh, f the first layer of access control is of course getting, uh, you know, getting at the environment in the first place. Uh, the second layer of access control is basically uh, using Rocket Chat standard access control to control who can go into which channel. And then the third layer of access control is essentially on a per raw spot command basis which basically means that uh, we actually only let certain people <laughs> uh, you know, execute certain uh, raw spot commands. So things like, for example, start pen test or start uh, offerta, you know, start quotation, only a small number of people within our organization are actually authorized to, uh, to use that. Uh, of course, our customers try, <laughs> you know, and, and this is also something you have to keep in mind if you are using chat ops. You know, we've also got a raw spot shell command uh, command that sort of hooks into some other stuff. Of course, we've got input sanitization on it. You know, the, I mean, the fir from day one when we set, set this up, the very first thing my hackers tried to do was hack it. <laughs> of course, yeah, you know. And the second thing that they did was uh, was Rossbot image v goatsy, which uh, well, at which point I was like, no, but. Uh, <laughs> But uh, non nonetheless, you, you do need to keep in mind uh, with this stuff that, uh, I mean, essentially you are giving people, you know, some, some amount of control, you know, into the back end box, so you have to use that appropriately and set things up appropriately, which is doable, but it's something you need to think about, so. Uh, there was another question somewhere. In, in a lot of situations, people tend to use email threads to discuss specific issues. Mm -hmm. I was wondering, you seem to have a hopper there near the top hand navigation with some open issues and such, uh -huh. but I was wondering in, in a chat-based sort of unified um, progression through time, how do you separate issues and um, is, is the uh, top hand navigation part of it? Are you now referring to the, um, uh, the issue tracker on GitLab? No, I'm, I'm talking about, you know, let's say we're, we're in such and such a phase and we found these interesting items and mm -hmm. we're going to divvy them up and you're going to do this and you're going to do that and oh, what did you find? Mm -hmm. A lot of when, when you're trying to track issues through time, people tend to use email threads and in this scenario, we wouldn't want to because we're trying to do it in the, the uh, channel. Right. So I was wondering what your strategy is for managing, uh, let's say, parallel workflows. Sure. That, that, that's, uh, that's easy to answer. So first of all, uh, Rocket Chat does away with email, and we think that's fantastic. <laughs> you know, because my email, I mean, look, I'm, I'm also the director of the company, and I get unholy amounts of email, and anything that al allows me to get less email is total win in my book. So that, that first of all. The, the question then, how do you keep it organized? Well, if you think about it, I mean, we're using this issue tracker, and it's, again, they also have labels. So you have findings, non-findings, to do, uh, you know, uh, what was the other one, uh, issue, info? Uh, uh, scans, documentation. Yeah, so there's a number of different things. So basically, if people just want to discuss stuff, but it's not like ready for the big time yet, I mean, oftentimes people will just uh, open up uh, basically a, uh, like for a scan thread, and then people can basically just, it's, it's a, it, you know, it's an issue in an issue tracker. So people can basically just then add additional comments to that issue. And, you know, in the same way it's using any ticketing system, it uh, keeps it organized. So. And 
also, as Melanie mentioned, we use a lot of uh, GitLab hooks. So in the, in the channel, you constantly see which pen tester is working on what. And also due to the dynamic, especially because the customer is peeking over our shoulders, which is uh, pretty interesting, so to speak. Um, but it makes sure that you get uh, dynamic discussions on certain vulnerabilities. And most of the times, several pen testers at once are looking at the same kind of uh, stuff. It really helps creatively looking at, uh, at problems. And what's also nice, actually, is sometimes even the customers will start adding their own comments on the issues. <laughs> So for example, we'll say we looked at this, uh, this part of your system and we found this issue. And then they'll say, well, actually, that's not an issue because we did this and this and this to, to mitigate it. So I mean, li again, this is sort of the benefit of having them there and having them be in the channel and also have access to their own repository that sometimes you will literally get discussion threads between the customer <laughs> you know, and the pen tester while the pen test is still happening. You know, other really nice effects of that also is that uh, you know they can actually see during the pen test, uh, you know, what the problems are. So they can actually already start with thinking about mitigation. Of course, we ask them not to fix stuff until we're done, so as not to disrupt our pen test. But it doesn't mean that on the back end they can't actually already get started. So in a way, it's actually really nice because before, you know, a couple weeks before, you know, we're required contractually to deliver the pen test report, they can actually, you know, from the get go get started with fixing stuff. <laughs> So that's actually another thing that the customers really like. Um, there's one more thing also I think that's worth mentioning that we do. We didn't demo this because uh, there's too much uh, confidential stuff in there, but uh, I'll just tell you about it, is that we also have tied uh, our Rocket Chat, uh, basically our chat ops system, also in with how we do project management. So we use uh, Kanban for our workflow. And we use an open source uh, software package called Kanboard uh, for basically tracking our projects. Now each of our uh, quotations and pen test reports and all of these things, we basically create a, uh, a task for it on, on a particular CAN board. So we have a CAN board for quotations. We have a CAN board for, uh, uh, for pen tests. We have a CAN board also for other things like you know, recruiting and you know, pre-sales and you know, so, some of this kind of stuff. But what's actually really nice is that uh, we have actually also built hooks uh, in between uh, Canboard and Rocket Chat. So for example, if we want to take one of these tasks, like let's say we have a, uh, a pen test that we're scoping and it's on the quotation board, and then we drag it from like, let's say, uh, scoping to writing to review to sent you know, to done, you know, we, uh, we can actually inject notifications into the chat room, you know, into the appropriate chat room. Um, that uh, then uh, can also inform everybody who's involved with the project that something just changed. We also use the same system also for dealing with uh, customer correspondence. So also uh, if uh, I have, uh, I received a mail from a particular customer, we basically can use that, and, and we've again got chat ops scripts that we can use to basically inject a copy of the correspondence into GitLab, and to provide a, uh, also to add a note on Canboard that hey, we just received something new from the customer, uh, click here for the li link to GitLab where you can view it. And then we also, also inject an announcement into the chat room of like, hey, we, you just got some, some new correspondence from like XYZ customer. Cool. <laughs> One other thing also that we've done in a similar vein is we've also written a script that also takes the Canboard information and there's also uh, less modified information on it. So we also have, uh, for example, on the quotation board, what we do is on a daily basis, just run by cron, we basically look to see you know, which uh, tasks on the quotation board have been idle for a week. And then we also automatically inject into the appropriate chat room reminders <laughs> of you know, such and such task has been idle for a week maybe you want to look at this, or maybe we need to ping a customer, or, you know, and this is also the system that we use internally uh, for, you know, not dropping balls, <laughs> you know, in periods when we're busy or, you know, with the usual company chaos. We used to have a person that did that manually, but now this is, uh, this is all scripted, so, yeah. I have a quick question about content. Um, in the example you gave was session cookies, right? So there's, you put a little curl command there, but there's usually a write-up about what the problem was, remediation steps, so on and so forth. Yeah. Are you thinking about, or have you integrated anything with, once I put a title in the session cookies, it automatically populates that stuff? So does it have to be written every time? Good question. We're actually um, currently working on open sourcing that as well. We have a, a huge library of standard uh, vulnerabilities, like uh, insecure session cookies, like uh, incorrect cipher settings, things that are we see a lot. Uh, 
we're in the process of making that all open source as well and automatically including that as soon as somebody tags it with a standard finding. So this is something we'll, we actually work on internally yeah. and will be open source paperware in the near future. Yeah, so, so future work, we're working on it, so. Any more questions? Yes. Um, how do you deal with engagements or reports that don't quite fit within the framework? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, as awful as Word is for banging out those things, a right. whole bunch of XSL bow is probably worse like, to have to do on a one-off. Yeah. Good question. So what do we do with non-standard things? So what we showed you right now, of course, was our workflow for a standard pen test. But what do we do with everything else? Uh, so we actually have a number of different templates. Um, for, so, we, so what we showed you right now is our standard pen test report template, but we also have, uh, for example, a standard, uh, standard template for load testing, uh, which is sort of related to DDoS testing, you know, which people ask us to do. Uh, we also have uh, a generic like, document template. So I mean, if some, something is completely non-standard and we just need to write like, a report of some kind, then uh, we just use the generic document template. I mean, yes, that's not as streamlined, but you know, for non-standard cases, you can't streamline everything. So that, that's also the reason why we use intermediate XML files. Like we go from the quick scope to the affair to .xml to the PDF, and we have that intermediate step, you know, instead of just making it the quick scope, because you know, because so we can insert non-standard stuff as needed in that process. Same thing also with uh, the penetration test report. You know, ultimately we're getting a pen test .xml, which again can be modified further to add any amount of uh, non-standard stuff to it, you know, uh, and then you can further generate the uh, PDF from that, so. Yes? Sorry, I can't, I can't hear you. Um, so can, have, you, have you considered using style sheets to convert to Word files instead of just PDF? Uh, no, I haven't considered it just because I'm not, uh, you know, when, we, when the company first started, we used Open Office and it was absolutely horrible. Um, you know, just because, I mean, it's really a version control nightmare. Uh, you know, the reason why we migrated to XML and basically flat text is because it makes it really easy for a distributed team to be able to work on stuff at the same time. I mean, yes, it's Git. Yes, occasionally you have a merge conflict, but at least you can still do version control on it. The problem with using uh, Word-like products or Open Office or similar things is that once you have them, you know, and it, then if you want multiple people to collaborate on it, it's a version control nightmare. So no, we haven't thought about that, just primarily because we're deliberately trying to migrate away from that. So, any other questions? Uh, yeah, um, on the gamification aspect of the question, uh, when you were showing the gamification in the red blue scenario, yep. um, is is that included uh, in the in the capability as well? And um, and from your customer base, have you had uh, academia reach out and use this as a tool in class? room um, settings for software developers? Uh, interesting question. Um, as of right now, no, uh, we haven't had any contact with academia about this. I mean, again, it's open source and it's now you know under the OWASP banner, so I really hope that ac academia can reach out and start using our platform. I think it's good for a lot more than what we're currently using it for. <laughs> and certainly anyone else who uh, wants to start using the environment and who can help contribute back and provide some more inspiration, I think that would be great. It's open source. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. Any All other right. questions? Okay. Okay, if that's it, let's have a big round of applause for our presenters, Peter and Melanie.